The understanding of the Anovex Alzheimer's Phase 2b-3 study data. There are two major things to be understood in the Alzheimer's Phase 2a study. This study was the basis for the design of the Alzheimer's Phase 2b-3. To convey the therapeutics effect of blarcomizine in Phase 2, a Anavex has presented the data on basis of blood concentration, not the dose. About 50% patients with a high concentration in blood responded but almost all patients with low and middle concentrations just basically showed no therapeutic effect. When the investors asked Enovex about the relationship between the concentration and dose they were told that they mostly overlapped. In this case some patients who were dosed 30 mg could have exhibited high concentration and improvement. Though, it was most likely for the 50 mg patients to have high concentration in blood and saw therapeutic benefits. The protocol for the Phase 2b-3 still kept the 30 mg cohort together with the 50 mg cohort. The data release on December 5, 2022 commingled both cohorts having different probability of response, diluting the true response numbers. That, at least, is the case with the data provided by the company as of late January 2023. The reported data had two separate and distinct parts. On one hand, the vaunted statistical significance. On the other hand, the odds ratio of 1.84 for dosed cohorts patients with testing scores of at least minus 0.5 odyscog points over the same scoring patients in placebo arm. Two pieces of information follow here. On the odyscog scale negative numbers suggest cognitive improvement. At about 11 months time placebo will have patients who still showed improvement when tested. It takes about 3 years for their numbers to approach zero. The paper in the next slide sets this number at 25% for the duration of one year of the follow-up of patients. My calculations assuming normal distribution of the placebo cohort and using standard deviation and mean as reported resulted with 33% patients improved for 11 months of the trial duration. Both numbers are very similar and in general agreement. Let us set it at 29%. 1.84 times 29% is 53% of patients who have improved by the above criteria. The other important information about blarcomizine which follows from its mechanism of action, is that about 70-80% patients should have genetic profile to positively respond to the drug. At 53% applied to populations of combined cohorts suggests that it is possible that about 70% of 50 mg cohort might respond to the drug. That is because 53% of the combined population applied to just 50 mg cohort is just 106% of the entire 50 mg cohort leaving some to cover the 29% due to default improvement with zero therapeutic effect. The 70% genetic predisposition leaves about 32% of the responders in the 30 mg cohorts versus the 29% who are improved by default in the placebo arm.
This constitutes the upper limit of 70% of responders for total number of responders in 50 mg cohorts. If the so-called genetic predisposition is lowered to 60% of the 50 mg cohorts then calculation leaves us with whopping 42% of responders in 30 mg cohort, versus 29% who are improved by default in the placebo arm. If there is no preference, both cohorts would show 53% responders each. The above paper stipulates that it should take about 3 years of dosing to see how efficacious Alzheimer's drug with 100% certainty is, by the time the default improvements dwindle to almost zero. Notwithstanding the controversy over the NFX data, my calculations point to unheard of efficacy signal versus the default improvement for the unmedicated Alzheimer's patients. The professionals who would evaluate the drug for partnership could see the full data for the trial. Most likely, Anavex will partner with a big pharma company to bring Blarcomizine to the market. This will bring to fruition all the years spent in developing and testing the drug. Please, don't forget to like the video or subscribe. We are about to produce more videos on Alzheimer's drugs.